And I, I am the man who does statistics because I can, because I can. All right, let's make sure that my webcam is working because it wasn't working a second ago. Oh, good. Now that we're recording at the right speed. All right, here is our scenario that we're going to work with, and we're in a new chapter. It's time for us to do some harder things. Are you ready for this? Hold on to your chalk. Here's our scenario that we're going to try to work with. At an airport, these are the percentages of different types of races that you can see going through the airport at any given time. 40% of them will be white. 30% black, 15 Asian, 8% Hispanic, according to Ask.com. These are the proper politically correct ways to refer to races. If you're offended, I'm really sorry. I tried to look that up. 7% for everybody else. Okay. Now, TSA will tell you they do these random checks where they just randomly pick someone for a further colonoscopy. And our question is, are they really random or are they targeting certain races? So these are the percentages that we expect. Now. First thing you need to know is when we're doing a chi-squared test, we don't work with the percentages, we work with the expected counts. So, I'm going to add a row, and I'm going to use these percentages, but only to help me get my expected values. Okay? So, let's say that we had 500 is the number that I've already played with a little bit. We're going to have 500 people come through the airport. If 500 people come through the airport and 40% of them are white, how many whites am I expecting to see in the airport? And the answer is going to be, where did I calculate it already? 200. So there's 200 white people, 150 that are black. Let me check my number is 75 and 40. And this is 7% of 500, which is going to be whatever the leftover is. And i got to move my screen so I can see my cheat sheet, which says 35. So if TSA really is random, then the number of people they have in their further inspection should be pretty close to this. All right. Well, let's see what we observe by watching TSA until we get the next 500 people. And what do we actually observe? Well, let's say that our observed number of white people is 180. Ah, so they didn't pull in as many white people as we expected. But if this is random, you'll never get exactly 200. Is it close enough? That's where the chi-squared test comes in. What about for blacks? It's supposed to be 150. It was 135. Well, okay, it's not exactly 150, but come on, isn't that close? Is it close enough? Well, let's keep going and we can do a chi-squared test on this. 90, 50, and 45. 90, 50, and 45. Now, what makes this different than what we did in the last chapter is we're not asking, is your race independent of some other variable here? We're just saying, do these values match what we expected. This is called a goodness of fit test. It's a chi-squared goodness of fit. In other words, does the data that we observe fit very good what we expected? All right. So how would we do this? Are you ready? I know you were worried because I said it was going to be harder. But if you're all scared because it's harder, then you can just go to sleep a little baby. Go to sleep a little baby. I need to have vote cops. So this is the way it's going to work. Null hypothesis. Null hypothesis says it equals what we expected and what we observed are close enough. What does that mean if what we expect for the random checks matches the percentages of the races going through the TSA security? That means the TSA really is random. Is there another way to say this? Yeah, we could have said our observed values match what we expected. Um, the proportions of each race 
fit the regular proportions, things like that. Now, what's the alternative? If it's not random, what does that tell you about TSA? That the airport is targeting certain races. And I have a friend who would fit in the Asian category and is convinced that it's not coincidence that he gets picked every time for the additional search. Well, all right, and is that a good thing or a bad thing? That's not the question we're here to answer. The issue is, are they really random when that's what they say? Let's use our alpha, 0.05, because that's what everybody uses. What are we going to do? We have expected values and observed values. I hope in your mind you're saying, isn't this just what we've done before, except we don't have to solve for the expected values? Yeah, 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 actually. Here's your prize for making it this far in the class. We have a whole chapter that is easier than what you've been doing. Okay? All we need to do is to calculate our chi-squared values like that. Okay? Let's see what we get. I've got observed minus expected squared divided by expected. How am I going to get this cell? I'll write the equation right over there. I'm going to take the 180 minus 200, square that, and divide by the expected. Why are we dividing by the expected and not the observed? Because according to the null hypothesis, this is the true number. This number is just off by chance, but it really should be 200. So 200 is what we're going to use there. It's still x minus mu over sigma is the idea here, and you should feel comfortable from this based on the last chapter, or else there's something really wrong. What do I get? I have a cheat sheet. I get 2. Chi squared value of 2. Does that really fit? 180 minus 200, that's 20, negative 20, right? But we're going to square it, so who cares? 20 squared is 400. 400 divided by 2 is indeed 2. Okay, good. All right. So this is a lot like what you did last chapter, but easier and less. I only have five of these rows to fill out. And my cheat sheet tells me it's 1.5 and 3. And 2.5, and then a really nasty decimal. How did that happen? So much for planning nice numbers. 2.86. Okay, there's all our chi squares. And wait, let's check whether we have a large enough sample size before we continue. How large do we need? I need all my expected values to be greater than 5. Check, 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 check. Okay, fine. We're good. How do I get my final chi-squared value? I'm going to add up these partial chi-squareds, same as we did before. If I add all them up, my cheat sheet says 11.85. What are my degrees of freedom now? Before, we said it's rows minus 1 times columns minus 1. But it's not like we have a table of rows and columns. We only have one row. One row of expected values, one row of observed values. So it's not going to be rows minus 1, columns minus 1, the way it was when we were testing independence. For goodness of fit, think of degrees of freedom as how many of these are random if I know the total. If I know it's going to total 500, do I automatically know this number? Well, no, 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 no. But the last number I could get just by taking the total, subtract these guys, right? So I have 1, 2, 3, 4 random squares, okay? So degrees of freedom is k minus 1, where k is the number of categories. I have five categories. My degrees of freedom is 4. Don't get confused by the number 500. 500 is how many people went through TSA. But for a chi-squared test, you look at the number of categories. We have five categories. So the degrees of freedom are 4. Okay. Go to the chi-squared table. You should feel comfortable with this. I'm looking on row 4, 11.85. It's clear over there between 0.02 and 0.01. So my p-value is between 0.01 and 0.02. Do I need to worry about left-tailed, right-tailed, two-tailed, subtract one? The answer is no. This is a chi-squared test, and you don't have to worry about any of that. That's great news. Okay? So there's our p-value. Are we ready to make a conclusion? I think so. Small p-value compared to 
So we'll reject the null. Do I have room at the bottom of my board for a conclusion? It's headline time. Reject the null. TSA targets racism. TSA is not random. Right? Because, because when you reject, you can say something bold. If it was failed to reject, we'd have to say, well, we couldn't show that it's not random. But rejecting is exciting. And we can even look at which races should complain. Where's our biggest chi-squared? Right here. Here's the biggest problem. What's happening? There's supposed to be 75 Asians that get pulled aside by security. There were 90 Asians, which goes along with what my friend says he feels like he gets targeted. What other big ones are there? The other category, it should have had 35 people go through additional screening. Instead, there were 45 people. Well, if these are the extras, who's, who's getting left out? Well, the whites are a little low, the blacks are a little low, Hispanics are actually a little high. So now you can say, what is TSA targeting? They seem to be ignoring the white and black categories. They seem to be getting more of the Asians and the others, and even a little bit the Hispanics. So there's our headline. So this is, this is how it works. Here's what we're doing. We give you some expected values, and you just get this in the problem. You don't have to do any work to get them. You look at your observed and your expected. You take the difference squared over the expected. That gives you these chi-squared values. Get your chi-squared, look it up on the table. The rest is just the way it should be. So this should feel a lot easier. That's your reward for making it this far in the class. Let's try another example. 